Hello and welcome to another edition of Drop In Bounds with me, your host, Corey Ballmeister. As always, brought to you by the lovely folks over at StarCityGames.com. All right, so today I'm going to be bringing you Jeskai Luca, the new talk of the town uh, that just ran over the weekend championship uh, uh, Magic Fest series last weekend. This list was brought to you by Miguel Simios. He top forward this tournament and uh, has just been putting on a masterclass of deck building and just phenomenal play. Uh, rivals competitor as well as just somebody who's been entrenched in esports for a very long time. So kudos to Miguel. He has been impressing me a lot. I think this is the best uh, Yorian Fires deck by quite a bit. And I actually think it's the best Fires deck in general. And everyone's going to be saying, well, what about Jeskai Fires, Corey? That's the best deck or it's been a very good deck for so long. I think Jeskai Fires is a thing of the past. I know. I can't believe I'm saying it. I think Jeskai Fires is unplayable right now when you're trying to battle all these Yorian decks. Karuga is just not what you want to be doing. Uh, it's just not the way that you want to be fighting this kind of deck. So I, I don't love it. Um, but I do love this deck. I played three awesome rounds. So you can fast forward to any of the rounds below as well as head to the deck tech where I talk about possible changes I want to make as well as talk about my individual matches. But with talking about individual matches, I do give out spoilers. So if you don't want your game spoiled, watch that after the matches. I hope you enjoy the games because they are some good ones. We'll see you in round number one. All right, and welcome to round number one here with Jeskai Luca Fires. We are on the draw, looking to be in a Yorian mirror. I think this hand is fine. Mythos is actually quite good in the mirror. Uh, copying Elspeth Conquer's death, copying fires, uh, all the good stuff here. We got the shark to facilitate for Luca's negative two ability. We're gonna keep. This seems fine. It's not anything, you know, insane, but it's a keeper in my book. All right. So that is the soul tie one or the teamer one. So easily could just be a stone cold mirror. I mean, this deck is very popular now uh, after the weekend it had at the Magic Fest uh, weekend championship. Okay, just kidding. So we are playing probably Bant. Probably the Bant version. All right, Fires is not bad, not bad at all. So I don't really want to play anything this turn. Uh, I don't even want to cycle because I definitely want the creature first. So we're just going to go land, go. I don't like that they ramped. Um, definitely gives them an advantage here. All right, let's see what the follow-up is. That's great. No four drop, no Tammy or anything like that is pretty good. All right, another fire is not necessarily ideal. So now we're just going to take two Sego. Uh, more than likely just shite cycle this, uh, shark typhoon for a baby shark. All right. What do they got? An omen. Okay. Yeah. That is the one kind of thing we we're missing with this draw is any kind of omen to make Yorian a little bit better, but we're still doing fine. All right. We kind of want them to play something decent so we can mythos it. Uh, no such luck. Do get to cycle this. Now a Teferi or a Narset or something would be really, really good here. So we're basically going to jam no matter what. Now they could play a 2-2 two -two Shark here and block our 1-1 one -one Shark. So I do not want to attack into that unless... Fires gets countered here, which we kind of want it to get countered, realistically. So we're going to throw this out. This is kind of bait. A, a great neutralized target, basically. We would be so happy about it. Love it. Love it. Now we get our free attack. Since we have the extra fires, that was uh, not too big of a deal. Now next turn, we could go fires and Luca. To fairy. Just kidding. So I'm guessing they're sending this back. That makes sense. So we could just go fires and then mythos on Teferi. I think I like that. Um, so let's start with fires. 
Got another counter spell would kind of suck. Dang it. Okay, well, not much we can do now besides lay on go. Now we can't really play Luka and activate it on the same turn um, effectively now without uh, a fire. So now we will have to play a little bit slower of a game. And now they can just like Yorian. Yorian is kind of scary here. Omen into Yorian is really good. Deciding not to do it. Okay. It's got to be bad for us. <laughs> okay. So I think I just want to Elspeth Conquer's death here. Once again, we're just in the jam phase. We don't really have a ton of ways to interact like the Bant version does. So we just kind of have to jam. They had a pretty good draw. They got to ramp, have a couple counter spells, plus a nice setup for Yorian. So this is not great for us, that's for sure. If this resolves, we're in a, a lot better position. Okay. Let's get that Teferi out of there. Okay, now we'll say go. Now we can even like Mythos the Elspeth Conqueror's death. I'm really surprised they didn't Yorian there. It seemed like a great Yorian turn. They got to reset Teferi and have two omens come into play. That just seems awesome. And instead they're gonna sack an omen? Oh, okay, okay. That makes a little more sense. All right, a 3-3 three, three shock. Elspeth Conqueror's death. Okay. We can just copy that and get rid of it. Which I think is what we're going to want to do. We can only cast one spell this turn. But getting rid of this does seem like the thing we want to be doing. Just because whatever we play, they can Yorian Blink. So, yeah, let's do that. Copy this. Pay with red and green? Sure. It does nothing <laughs> for people wondering. It only affects it if it's a creature. All right, so we get to get there, Elspeth Conquer's death, and then say go. Now next turn, oh no, 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 we're one shot. I was gonna say, we just cast Elspeth Conquer's death, so next turn we should be able to Luca and Elspeth, but this is a four mana Elspeth Conquer's death. And we can't really blink this out with Yorian, so it's not insanely good in that regard. All right, Uro. Van Yorian versus the Luca Yorian version. It is still pretty unclear which version's better. Um, I know the the nut draw from the Luca version is much better, um, but you know it's just an overall very consistent deck uh, from the band side. Still not wanting to play Yorian. It looks like. That's pretty good. Okay. All right, let's sack this for blue, I think is fine. It's not very good either. Um, God, we could just play Luca and tick up, but then it gets exiled by this. We don't really have a great play, except maybe just make a castle token. Otherwise, Yorian just gets a free blink on whatever we play. So that's all we're going to do. It's very uh, unexciting, but now next turn we could go Luca plus Elspeth. And oh, now with uh, Elspeth Conqueror's death, we can't. We can just go Luca. I wouldn't be shocked if they go Uro here, but then we could take their Uro... I don't have anything to bring back with Elspeth Conger's death, so I'm not worried about chapter three. So taking Uro here does seem pretty sweet. With Agent of Treachery, by the way, is what uh what I was planning on doing. Now they they just easily might Yorian. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now they get six looks at a counter spell, and then we're just dead. Yeah, 
Yeah, not looking great for us, that's for sure. Make a castle token. ECD reset. Get a ton of draws, yeah. And honestly, this was the big key of the game, is they had omens and we did not. So they got to sculpt their draw pretty well. Uh, we were just kind of at the mercy, and we got our fires cancel or uh, countered, which was going to allow us to be a little bit more explosive. All right. So very unlikely that we can do anything in this game. Taking Yorian and just hope they brick, I guess, is decent. Um... Four, five, six. Can only cast one spell regardless here. I think we just have to play Luca and pray. It's like the only thing that gives us a chance to maybe come back. So let's try it. If they counter, we're just going to concede. We can't win from here. Yeah, and dispute works here just because we only had two mana available. All right, game number one. Going to them. So we get to change our board or our game plan quite drastically here. Take out shatters, uh, bring in disputes. I like vetoes. I like taking out fires. So this has been a, a kind of a dilemma um, between, between players is to take out fires or not. I like taking out fires when you bring in this disrupt this much disruption because it gets quite awkward when you draw, you know, two fires and two disputes or whatever. You don't really want to cast the fires. So I think we want to slow down and kind of play into their game plan of playing with some counter spells. We're still just a much better um, Yorian deck because we have a bunch of agents against them, but we still need to be able to play some counter magics. Uh, some counter magic and try to disrupt them from what they're doing. So I like taking out all the shatters and uh, all but one of the fires. I like leaving in one. So let's give it a shot. And uh, this is what I saw Nasif doing as well. So I got to think that maybe my strategy is not uh, so bad because I, I think that is, uh, uh, he did quite well with it as well. And I think it's a very good strategy. All right, so we're going to go first. There's our one fires. Honestly, a lot of land drops in this matchup is what you want. We have a little bit of disruption. I'm going to keep. I'm going to leave this in hand and probably cycle it, though. Let's put this into play tapped. Now, are we going to want to Doman's Veto anything this turn? I do not think so. So, I think we're just going to go land tapped. We may play Triome this turn. Nah. Say go. Now we'll see if we get to sneak in a Teferi or not here, depending on what they do. I highly doubt it, personally, but... Because even if they just leave this Triome up, we really can't dispute. Okay, now I think we're just going to play our Triome. Maybe not. Yeah, I could see cycling here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take two. We're going to cycle. Because then next turn we can go Berthamolitis plus Dovin's Veto. They're going to probably get their Gross Spiral turn. Just a Sharkling. A zero zero Shark. All right. Let's see what they want to do. Grazer. Haven't seen that one in a while. We be ramping. Okay. All right, I will cycle here. Okay, I think we just want to go like this. Play birth, get a planes. Play the planes. And we'll probably go for a Teferi with Dovin's Veto back up next turn. More than likely, we'll see how this next turn develops. And we got fires in the way, uh, in the, you know, um, in the holster, ready to deploy whenever we find a good chance when we run out of disruption. But for now, we just definitely want to uh, keep disrupting our opponent. Now, we could just play Elspeth's son's nemesis here. It's a little risky. We could play Teferi to kind of bait out a counter spell, get something into our graveyard. We're for sure going to play this. 
Um, so Teferi doesn't play around Dispute that well right now. Um, El uh, Elspeth's Sons Nemesis actually does, because we could play this plus Dispute, but then they could just go like Elspeth Conquers Death. Then I guess we could Elspeth Conquers Death. We could Fires and Elspeth Conquers Death. So that's not bad, actually. Let's try this. Resolves, huh? Okay. So let's create a couple of tokens. Then we'll say go. Now we have Mystical Dispute available in case they try to like jam a Yorian. Um, otherwise we can't counter too much else with this. 2-2 two, two Shark, sure. Pretty good at fighting Elspeth uh, the fair way. Okay, Elspeth down to one. Untap. All right, now we'll get a nice chance to try to play Teferi here. So we can pump creatures if we want. If this Teferi doesn't resolve. So how about something like this? We better go get red for this. So I want to use white red. Just in case we get Luka and our fires gets canceled. Or countered. Alright, so let's go with a Teferi. They have definitely advantage on drawing the shark typhoons. Okay. Um, I really want this to resolve. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight over this. Okay. That fight did not work too well. All right, so now let's jump these creatures since we're gonna lose Elspeth anyways. Find your valor and, fight. and go for a little bit of damage here. And now we can actually escape this if we felt the need to ferry. I kinda wanna dispute this. It's going to be a dead card anyways. And then maybe we can go fires into ECD. Nope, they prioritized. They prioritized that a little bit more. Now. Huh. Could just play a Narset. To play around a dispute. I think I like that. Can only play one spell though, so we want to play the one that plays around the most things. And this just plays around Dispute. It's nothing real extra there. That's okay. All right, we'll say go. All right, so that's two vetoes. They probably don't have a ton of those, maybe three tops. Okay. They can follow this up with a counter spell. It'll feel a little bad. Okay. I think this is a fire's turn. Lame. God, they have a lot of counter magic. They've just countered everything. We haven't been able to play a single spell this entire match. All right, so if they go Yorian Blink. Okay, we can go Elspeth here. They decided to not play this, so I would assume they have one more piece of disruption. So I don't really want to play Luka quite yet. 
So I, I think I just want to play this. Because I don't care too much if this gets countered. But it does still pressure them into wanting to do something. This could just be a big sharp turn from them as well. So maybe Elspeth Conquer's death is better. All right. Talk myself into it. We'll try for the ECD. This isn't even that big of a deal here too. So this is kind of uh, bait a little bit. Luca is the, the important thing, but we do get to get rid of the Teferi on the battlefield. Yeah. And say go, see if they got the big shark. I, I'm putting them on shark here. It's kind of the only thing that makes sense. But if it's just shark, I feel okay about this as long as they don't draw it into another counter spell. Nope, okay, excellent. Hmm, not excellent. Okay. Well, we can go Luca with Dispute Mana. I don't see how we wouldn't want to do that. Get our Agent of Treachery going. All right. Come on, come on. Resolve, please. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's exile this. Okay, now I think we just have to take ECD, otherwise they get to Yorian Blanket. So let's take that. We've got plenty of stuff to bring back for that later. We'll say no attacks. Oh, I thought they had Baby Shark. I was like, no, they get to kill Luca. Okay, it's looking okay now. They liked one of those cards. Narsa. That definitely is a card they would like. A stroke. So they have to leave four mana up for that to make that effective. Looks like they will. Razor. Actually pretty annoying because we could attack. Ooh, that was good. All right, well, let's tick this up. That was really good. And we hit, huh? Three, four, five, six, seven. So we can just play this and have Dispute back up. But then we'll lose Luca. What if we played Yorian... Blink this and blink this and stole Narset with Dispute backup. That's probably better. Yeah, that seems really good. Okay, we'll do this. That was a nice draw on our part here to be able to interact with that stroke. Okay, so we get to blink out this, blink out this okay yeah yeah and that's all you really got to do with these luca decks is just eventually get through and you know the games become pretty easy but it's just hard to get those initial cards through um do we want to make any changes here i think this seems fine to me i liked how that played out i don't really like any of the cards in our sideboard for this matchup so seems kind of like a no-brainer to me all right game number three here with luca fires what I think is the best deck in standard right now. It just popped up recently, like I mentioned earlier, but it is just so good, so powerful. Okay, I like this hand. We can go get the blue here. This hand is nice. We got Shark Typhoon. That is just one card that we just had not gotten so far. And Omen. Omen is pretty important in this matchup. So we definitely need blue right away. So we're gonna play that. Try to interact. Okay. Growth Spiral. There's the land. Okay, just a planes and a go from us. Now we got Dispute or Omen here if they play nothing. 
And if they go for something, then we do get to uh, come back with a Teferi. Don't care about the green mulligan here, a Boreal Grazer. All right, so they are land heavy. So let's go like this. I just want lands here. Okay, well, how many lands do I really want? I think I just want one of these. And I do want some more blue here. So these lands are not ideal. I'm gonna put the planes on the bottom and keep the sacred foundry. Okay. Now. I think I'm content just sacred foundry tapped. I don't really want to play a baby shark, a 1-1 one, one shark. So I think I'm just gonna go like this. Our mystical dispute is losing value pretty quickly here. So if I can get any target for it, I'll be pre pretty happy. Teferi or Narset, I'll be snapping off, of course. Okay. I could go for a Teferi myself now. It's not bad. Now that I have double blue. We have a bunch of Elspeth Conquers deaths. And if they have neutralized, we actually get to push it through. All right, we'll try it. Teferi. And maybe they just have nothing here, you know? Yeah, exactly. This, this could easily have been just, oh, they don't really have much. So they could have a shark typhoon. Um, so with that being the case, I want to tick up. 3-3 oh, three, three shark does still kind of suck because it does pressure Teferi quite well. But we could 3-3 three, three shark ourselves back. Okay. Or just Yorian. Yorian's probably better. Sweet. Yeah, Yorian is awesome next turn for us. So then Teferi gets out of range. Uh, so we'll tick up. Play our own Yorian. Get these out of here. Draw a card. I play Yorian a lot more aggressively, I think, than other people. Um, yeah, it would suck if we get this. Let's keep this. It would suck if this gets Elspeth Conquer's death and we don't have access to that anymore, but... If that doesn't happen, we just have so many chances to value, uh, to outvalue it. Narset's a good start here. Omen. Omen. Okay. Okay, so we can just attack this. Uh, and then we'll get a free block and then Elspeth conquers death it. I like that. So always attack first in this situation. Basically, you're saying your opponent is going to want to block this, but they're not going to want to just... They're going to take four if uh, they don't... Uh, if we just Elspeth Conquer's death first. So it's much better to do this. I guess we can Luca here too. That seems a lot worse to me. I think Elspeth Conquer's death here is just so strong. So let's ECD. Exile this. Bounce the shark. Another Shark Typhoon is awesome. Our hand is set up excellent. This game is looking pretty good. Neutralize, not too valuable right now, my friend. It's a fairy, okay. Getting some value. Okay. Not incredibly afraid of this turn. What we'd like to find now is some counter magic. Okay, check this up. I think it's just Shark Typhoon time. Just progress our actual battlefield a little bit more. So we can attack here. Um, we could even make like two tiniest sharks. Could go Elspeth and a 1-1 one, one shark. That's not bad. 
and then just really set up this Luca turn next turn. We don't have anything in our yard right now as well. Um, I don't know how valuable that truly is. Taking one of their lands and Lucaing this turn is not that ideal. So I think we're just gonna go Fabled Passage and it's close between Elspeth and just a giant shark. I think I think I am gonna play Elspeth here. Make a couple of tokens. Then we'll make a baby shark. Baby shark do 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 do. Uh-oh. <clears throat> um, all right. What do you got? What are we taking? ECD. It's not that big of a deal. We can just take that back. Cycle for one. Okay. So take this up. Now we can get kind of close to just killing them too. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have eleven damage. I think it's just Luca though. Luca and Steel. Probably back our Elspeth conquers death. Yeah, let's do that. Luca. Exile this. Steal back our own permanent. Um, and we're gonna pump, because I actually want them to kill my Elspeth, because then we get to, then we get to bring it back with Elspeth Conquer's death. So let's do this, we'll say go. Now we can either Psycho Triome or uh, Psycho Shark Typhoon. Yeah, and they're they're scrying, and they're gonna need all their mana here to be able to come back. We've I think we've basically closed the door on this one. There's some kind of draws that can blink them out of this. Just a couple more agents or something. Elspeth Conqueror's death is a start, but I I think they're toast. I think we have proven we are the Yorian deck to beat. Not Bant Yorian. That's last week's Yorian deck. So stay tuned. We'll be right back for this week's Yorian deck in a second. All right, everyone, round number two here with Jeskai Luka. All right, we are on the play. Another Yorian deck, I and mean, honestly, you know, that <laughs> that is what we're gonna be down to here because I do think it's the best deck, and it's just which flavor of Yorian. I mean, there is a lot of different ones. Uh, I think the main two are Bant Yorian and now Luka Yorian, but it, uh, it does vary. This hand is fine. We once again have the turn five Luka. That made it really good. That made it excellent here. Now we have Teferi into make a creature into Luca steal your stuff. Pretty tough to deal with in the mirror here. I think this one is the mirror. So let's go with Teferi. We can tick. I think we can tick up on this one. If they play Narset, we get a little punished, but that's okay. Let's try this. Narset punishes us slightly, but then we can Mythos the knight, the uh, Narset. Okay, no such case. So this is more than likely going to be a shark turn. Now, what can they play that punishes us? I don't. Well, since we drew land number five, I think we are completely safe. Just playing the passage and ticking up again. We'll say go. They're probably not gonna see our Shark Typhoon coming. Or maybe they will. It's not that it's hot tech anymore these days. They may draw a card not thinking about Shark Typhoon and then we get a free uh, attack there. I have a plan. All right, so we are going to go with this. Cycle for two. Okay. So they could do the same now is the problem. Um, they can cycle back and then we don't get Luca. I kind of just want to go Luca, Agent, 
uh, steal a land to keep them off that and just try to basically keep them off land from now on. I think that is the best thing to be doing right now. So we, I, I don't even want to attack. It's just not worth it. So we're going to go with Luca. We're going to exile this. Not even attacking. It's too risky. We're going to get agent. Now we're just going to be stealing lands. See if they wanted to do anything. They did not. So we're going to tick up to Fairy again. I guess we could tick it down. Just draw a card on nothing. All right. I feel pretty good about this. Yeah, they may go Shark. They can't Luka, but they can like Mythos our agent. And they can attack with their Shark. Oh yeah, that's right. They can do that. Okay, what are they gonna take? That's pretty strong. Bouncing their agent back. Uh, we can bounce our agent back and then just recast it. That's probably pretty strong. Um, It's probably what we want to do. Is there any chance we just want to just steal another land? Hmm. I do want to deal with Luca because they can just put a 1 1 in and then age in us again. I can do the same. I oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. I can cycle. Oh, okay. Okay. We got this. All right, so let's first cycle for one. Okay. Baby shark. Okay. <laughs> oh, these mirror matches are just absolutely absurd. They are completely luck-based, basically. Being on the play is a huge advantage. Uh, games two and three get to be a lot different. Now we have a lot of blue cards here. So trying to sideboard against ourselves, basically. Let's bring in disputes. Let's bring in vetoes. I think fires once again are a liability. I think we sideboard basically the same uh, as we did last round. I think exactly the same. Like our wraths are still bad. Um, so I, I think we just bring in a bunch of counter spells. Seven counter spells, take out four wraths, three fires. Uh, it seems like it's a plan that's been working for me. I am like 9-0 and with this Luka deck. I think it is absolutely the real deal, and it is so hard to beat. So, uh, and, and this is the plan I've been using consistently. So, there hasn't been as many mirrors because I played a lot this weekend while this deck was on the up and up. But uh, now that it's, it's very well known, we might see a lot more mirrors. And they're basically random anyways, so. Ugh. That is not good. We got a mulligan this one. All we need is lands in this matchup. Well, that's that's not necessarily true, but you definitely need to be t making your land drops in this matchup. We're gonna mulligan. This sound is fine. Nothing insane. We're gonna keep and get rid of this agent. Don't really wanna draw those anyways, so this seems fine. All right. Another blue land. Let's go like this. We'll be able to cast Narset on turn three, which is a very important card in this matchup. Okay. Main phase Omen to play around our counter spells. If we top deck an untapped blue source, we get to play Birth. If not, we just have to play Triumph. Ooh, that was nice. Oh, that was really nice. Okay, we're just going to play this, say go. Hopefully dispute their three mana counter spell and then play our own. Bummer. Okay, now I think we just birth just to make sure we hit our land drops and then we'll hopefully be able to play around uh, their counter magic next turn. But we do need a blue source to be able to play Narset. Um, so it's not ideal by any means. Another omen. Do we want to counter this? It almost seems worth it. 
All right, I'm gonna counter it. I'm gonna try anyways. Disputes, they have diminishing returns. They could just go fires and a white planeswalker in their own Elspeth or something, and then it's it's quite bad for us. I think I like countering that. Okay, Narset will be able to play one of our own. Okay, Omen. We got our creature for Luca. So now we just want to play a Narset as well. Shark Typhoon. Play a land and we'll say go. Oh, now we can Luka next turn. They can't Luka this turn. The real question is how much are we going to gamble? If they play ECD or something, we definitely just jam, but. Okay. Does not want to play it, huh? Just the trick for this. Could grab Mythos here. Mythos is probably the best card. I think we just probably have to jam. Uh, otherwise, they are just going to jam on us next turn. We don't really have great... Permission. I mean, we can go like cycle shark typhoon for a three three. Hope that that's good enough. It just seems like we should just jam here and kind of just lose if uh, if they do have a counter spell though. The problem is they could go like disp or uh, Do Dovin's veto plus omen. But they can't go Mystical Dispute plus Omen, so I think for that reason, we're going to jam. Luca! Come on. Oh no! Dovin's Veto is not what we wanted to see. Uh-oh. Now we're probably in trouble. Uh-oh. Okay, what are they gonna take? What must be to adapt? Okay. 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 We don't have the green mana, so we can't mythos with a little bonus here. Um, but we can take Luca, or we can mythos Luca. Or how about this? Okay, I think I know. All right, this seems pretty good. Um, we're going to Mythos this. Take Luca. Mythos again, or Luca, Agent again, excuse me. And now, what do we want to take? Do we want to just steal a land back? We probably have to. We could also steal Agent. And then they can't Yori in it. Yeah, that seems pretty good. All right, play this and we'll say go. <clears throat> Start of the turn with zero agents, end with three. These mirrors are absurd. All right, do we know owner? So that's them. This is ours, so we can Yorian blink this. This is also not ours. So just like Elspeth Conger's death or something, you know, not that big of a deal. These mirror matches are just absurd. Okay. Mythos, get their own agent. Probably steal their agent back. Nope, just going for the lands on this one. And oh my god. If we can we needed that land, I think. Um So we can 
One of these is ours. We can't blink the token, so we can Yorian to steal something else. We may just have to... We will have three of their permanents as well. We might just have to take lands back for this one. Activate. We could just attack Luca. Then they may block. They may block and kill our only agent that can be blinked though, so that's not ideal. But attacking with these two seems fine. Or getting Narset out of there is probably better. Yeah, it's probably better to kill Luca. All right. All right, we'll kill a token. Yeah, that was their agent. All right, I think we just have to Yori in here. Blink. Blink. All right, now do we want to agent their Yorian? No, Yorian went down, so that's not that big of a deal. I think we just want to take their agent again. Just because Yorian blinking their agent is devastating. So let's just take another agent. Okay. ECD, pretty good. This is, that was our only agent. Now we can go get another one with this Luca and like Omen next turn. Okay. So let's start by activating. They didn't even activate their Luca. Love it, love it. All right, Teferi. Um, I think I wanna just start with Teferi. All right, we'll start with this. Counter spell check. Okay, now we can just bounce the token to stop their Luka shenanigans and then just kill all their planeswalkers. So let's go like this. That's fine, I guess I could have attacked first. Um, now let's try to kill this. Try to kill this, and two upstairs, nope, that's wrong. We don't mind if they baby shark and try to block. So let's go like this, the beats. Hiya, hiya. Okay, now we're gonna go Omen of the Sun. Now we don't want them to be able to blink their ECD, so we are going to just steal that. And we might actually just draw cards now. I think we have enough of their permanents. Ah, oh, we had to get, give back their Luka. That was probably the problem. All right, then we'll say go. All right, another agent. Taking back ECD. It does miss the chapter upage when they try to steal that. Okay, so let's start with Narset. Now we're, hey, that's not bad. Um, no, now, I okay, yeah, GG. They saw the writing on the wall. I don't know if we were necessarily winning that turn, but having a counter spell up and we were either gonna play another Narset, Elspeth, and then have Dovin's Veto up or just make a giant shark and try to interact that way. But regardless, so far we are the Yorian King on today's dropping bomb. So we'll see you next round. We'll try to get that coveted 3-0. See you there. All right, and welcome to our third and final round here with Jeskai Luca. All right, we're on the play and gasp, no companion. All right, let's see what we're up against. 
Um, this hand is a little awkward because birth gets a plans and we do not have double blue, but we could cycle, cycle, we could cycle shark typhoon. We can cycle shark typhoon on turn three in case we don't find the blue source and then go into Narset to hopefully find Luca for turn five. So very good sequence of events here. We have to assume that we're up against team of reclamation. Um... I think that would really be it. I know there was one other deck that's kind of escaping me right now, but definitely, oh, and just Mono Red. Okay, yeah, Team of Reclamation and Mono Red. Birth of Miletus is quite good against this deck, and honestly, so is Shark Typhoon, so our hand is okay. Narset is not good against it, for what it's worth. All right, so we'll get a good Plains Aru. Say go, I have not played against good old Mono Red in a long time. Let's see if, uh, let's see if the deck got any better, basically. All right, so Tin Street uh, Dodger, a little awkward against uh, Birth of Miletus, that's for sure. So here is the turn where we want blue uh, for this, so we'll have to wait till next turn. We'll just say go and a Shark Typhoon for one. Land Annex is just 99% sure the play. We'll see if they want to get in there. If they don't have a land, they're in a lot of trouble, okay. All right, Annex. No attacks. We were hoping they did attack. The wall kind of hurt us here, but we're still going to cycle. Elspeth Conqueror's death is awesome. Now the question is, do we want to go with Berthamolitis, Tapland, and then just ECD next turn? Um, that's probably better than getting a Narset down. Narset is not very good, and this helps us gain a little bit of life. Okay, so this is actually tough because... We want to play Elspeth Conqueror's Death next turn no matter what, but we can do that without Birth. So we can actually Narset into ECD next turn and then Yorian. I think I'd rather just play defensively though here and just play a Birth, get a Plains, play a Sacred Foundry, and just say go. And, you know, if they do go uh, Embercleave here, it kind of sucks. But then we can Elspeth Conqueror's death them uh, quite effectively. Just taking the Annex, I think, would be step one. And that's the thing with these mono red decks. They're just pretty easy to uh, know what they're doing because they've been the, doing the same thing for so many turns of the format that it is not that scary against them. So we're just going to chump block Annex here. They may kill it, which is fine as well. Sure. Uh, now to eat up a damage, we'll, we'll take four. I would rather keep a wall. We're going to get a second wall here. All right. And it's Elspeth Conqueror's death time. Let's get rid of Annex. Then we'll say go. A little scary here without a wrath. Um, but not that big of a deal here. We do have Yorian next turn we could play. Could just cycle a giant shark next turn as well. Yorian's probably a better play, especially if they play something big. Because then Yorian is also a removal spell. So we'll see what they do here. Even Embercleave is falling into Elspeth Conqueror's Death's trap. So they really are going to have to just play a lot of low to the ground stuff here if they want to avoid the value of Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Here, I think I will block like this because Ember Cleave does hit us for 10, 11, 12. Could just go like this, take five. They may pump with Castle. All right, we're going to keep it around. We're not dying to Ember Cleave, so this is fine. Okay, at least we get our value with Elspeth Conqueror's death. Yikes. I guess we could just be dead if they have, like... Ooh. All right, well, Annex is pretty scary here. We get to gain a little bit of life. We're just gonna have to Elspeth Conquer's death Ember Cleave, though. Unfortunately. Ember Cleave is what gets us dead. So 
So we'll blink this out. Land, bring it back. I fear the cleave. All right, and then we'll say go. Not looking super great here. We can block with Yorian here, not this turn, but next turn to bring it back with Elspeth Conqueror's death. We're gonna have to just throw a wall in front of Annex. And they could castle as well. Yeah, we're actually at one because they can castle. We're just barely hanging on here. We don't have a great way to gain life. Okay, that means they can't castle. Okay. <clears throat> Be interesting what they all attack with here. Maybe we just have to block Annex with Yorin and hope to get a Wrath. We have five looks at a Wrath to just wreck him. I think we might be that far behind that we just have to. Soak up as much damage, go to two. Because we're not winning with the things in our hand. We just need to find a Shatter the Sky here. So I think that's what we're going to have to do. And I'm pretty happy if they attack with Annex, yeah. It's a good read on their part. And now we only take two. Yeah, it just might be a no attack turn for him. Which I think is fine as well. Yeah, it's tough. Maybe we have to kill Robert, no. No attacks feels wrong. Okay. So I think we want to start with the Narset. Try to find something. We can get a, or we can just go Giant Shark. We can go 5-5 five, five Shark. Block Bone Crusher, block this to Annex, block here, block here, take six. So that leaves us dead. We do need something else. <clears throat> um, we could just cycle a 1-1 one, one right now. Cycle for a 1-1, one, one, see if we can draw something. Yeah, I think we have to, because Narset... Narsa doesn't really get us anywhere. Hmm. What we really want is like an omen. Okay, so that, that's good. We can get a, a white omen and that would be excellent here. Gain a little bit of life, two blockers. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Hey, there we go. Not bad. Um... <clears throat> Now let's go like this and just say go. That omen will keep us alive though. So now we'll have five blockers, take four, go to one, but then this gains us two as well. And we want Yorin to die now, that is the goal. Math is for blockers. Um, I think we're fine to go with this. I got a fires. If they drew Ember Cleave or something, that's just a tilt and not much we can do about it. All right, so we'll block here, we'll block here, we'll block. Um, here, here, nope, can't do that. Here and And here, how about that? What does that do? We take four, a lot of things die. Our Yorian dies. 
We're not killing the Dodger, though. I mean, I do think we're going to need to find Shatter anyways, so we might as well just soak up as much damage as we can. All right. We'll block like this. <clears throat> they always draw Embercleave on the last possible turn. They always draw it. Ugh. That is so lame. We were like really back into this game, if not like looking pretty good next turn. So unlucky. So unlucky. And they already cast one? Jeez. Okay, all right. You got it. You got it. All right, so how do we want to sideboard here? Um, Narset's pretty bad. We'll take that out. Mythos is actually pretty bad as well. Yeah, that seems like a pretty easy sideboard to me. Fires is still really good against him, especially when we have a lot of disruption. Teferi is good against Embercleave. Uh, Omen's awesome. Omen of the Sea is okay. Solar Blares and Shatter is awesome for Wrath Effects. Elspeth's good. I still want to be just stealing their stuff. Elspeth conquers Deathing. Their big stuff is still fine. Yeah, let's do this. God, that was a tilt. Mono Red. I'm glad Mono Red is not everywhere in the metagame because I feel like the deck's easy to beat, but they can still just like have that one turn where if they draw Ember Clay, there's not much you can do, you know? All right, so game number two. We're on the play. This hand looks great. Birth into birth into fires into wrath. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Wrath that doesn't kill our walls. That's nice. That is nice. Birth of Melitis is really good. It, it was very good in that game, um, but birth doesn't stop the go over the top effects of Embercleave um, like I would want to, of course. Mulligan from our opponent, our companionless opponent. Uh oh, Mulda five. Rut row. And we got the tokens for Luca here. All right, down to five. Two lander, but we have no problems for land whatsoever with the Berthas. The Berthies, maybe? All right, there's Scorchy Spits. We're gonna be doing this for a few turns. Berth, find a planes, your go. Ouch. Not that big of a deal against our walls. Protection from white. Um, well, Omen is pretty good. But I do kind of want to just guarantee that I have fires for next turn. And this does still kill this. So I just want to guarantee I can Wrath next turn. So that means Birth of Melitis. Fires into Solar Blaze is going to be busted when it does not kill our O4 walls. All right. Maybe Shield Break our uh, walls. Is that what they're considering? That'd be a weird one to bring in against us, I guess. And I'll snap block here. Walls are meant to get in the way. God, now we're only taking two a turn. Now we're only taking one a turn. Maybe I just don't have to uh, solar blaze. It still just seems so good. All right, we're still gonna do it. Fires, solar blaze, your go. That is busted. Now next turn we can go Luca plus Omen, steal your stuff, or if they play a three drop. All right, they're dead. Um, so we could go Luca, Yorian, Omen. Yeah, that seems insane. Uh, we can't, yeah, let's take two. So, Luca. Take both their lands. Because <laughs> we get to Yorian blink the other one. Yorian. Two omens. 
These are what turns are made out of. These are what dreams are all about. Oh, man. Uh, nah. Alright, then how about we get back, Agent? Take your other land. Here go! <laughs> your turn! <laughs> that game was a little bit easier from our end, I have to say. I have to say that one was a wee bit easier. All right, the game on the draw is gonna be a little trickier. We are gonna have to focus on having some two mana interactive spell, either Fire Prophecy, Aether Gust, Birth of Melitis is still plenty good. Um, and then really try to Wrath on turn four. Um, we're, we're, we're just gonna have to keep a good hand, basically. We don't really have too much to bring in. Mono Red is not the matchup that we have in mind when we uh, just think about Standard right now. So it is, a, it is a little tricky. Our sideboard is not exactly fine-tuned to be able to beat Mono Red on the draw, but I still think we are just so much of a more powerful deck that we should be okay here. Well, we have the Wrath on four. We have Omen if we can get just any land, and if we get one land, we also get to Teferi. Uh, and then Fires into Shatter as well. I'm gonna keep this because if we just have a blue land on top, this hand is so good. On the draw, I think this hand's a keeper, but of course this hand could have a fail rate. We got two turns to draw land. Next turn to really uh, pull ahead, uh, getting a blue land, but, or I'll just take a Triome. Triome. No, not like this. I still stand by it. Now a Triome is still okay, but it's definitely worse. Okay. Land for Teferi. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Um, not ideal, of course, but not terrible. So if we can top deck another land, we should be okay. If not, I don't know how great Teferi is going to be for us. Yeah, this one might have been a little too slow. We hope they progress their board instead of just pumping with Castle, I think. Okay, not exactly what we wanted to see. <sighs> so now we're taking five, six, seven. Okay, so we can Wrath. We can go Fires and Shatter. We take a total of four down to four. It's definitely worth it. Fires, Shatter. Then we get to Shatter again. This one's gonna be tough, because we can't gain life with Omen until we deal with uh, Tybalt. So we're gonna wanna like maybe Shark Typhoon, and then Omen. No, not Hasty Threats. No! Not two Hasty Threats. We're dead. All right, well we got punished for the keep. Uh, I still stand by it, because if we would have drawn that third land on time, uh, it would have been great. So it, w it was a risk though, it was a calculated risk and it, sometimes it doesn't work out for you. And honestly, if they didn't have a bunch of haste threats there, this draw still, I think, would have been good enough and we could have pieced it together, but you know what? It's mono red, so. Dang it, I did not expect to not 3-0 due to mono red. This is just a deck we're never seeing played anymore, but all right, I'll roll my eyes all the way into the deck tech where we'll talk about the individual card choices on Jeskai Luka. See you there. And welcome to the Deck Tech here with Jeskai Luca, brought to you by Miguel Simios, uh, a Rivals competitor who top forward the weekend championship event uh, with this deck list. And honestly, it just looked so good all weekend. Uh, he was 8 0 after day one um, and just uh, was able to capitalize and convert it into a top eight. So let's talk about the individual card choices. Uh, as far as enchantments goes, we have Birth of Melitis and Omen of the Sea. These are not only both good things to blink out with Yorian late game, uh, get another planes with Birth of Melitis, as well as, you know, 
everybody's been playing with Omen of the Sea, blinking that out, getting some extra cards. But Birth of Miletus also creates the 04 wall, which is very important for Luka. So not only is it helping curve out and smooth out our deck by getting us to land number three, but it is also protecting us from early aggressive draws trying to target our Planeswalkers. And then it combos with Luka. Birth of Miletus was already good enough in an aggro-filled world um, to be just a staple in these blue-white decks because it protects Narset and Teferi so well. This is something I played a lot of even season one um, or week one of the last season with just Azorius control. And it's something I really stood by as just one of the most powerful things you can be doing on turn two back then. So it makes sense now that it's being included when you have this new Planeswalker to combo with essentially, which we'll get to later. Nurse and Teferi, nothing really new here, but if you're a blue-white deck who doesn't play a lot of creatures, Narset is going to be amazing, and then Teferi is just, it's Teferi Time Reveler. It's busted. It's busted. Play it. Then we got two Omen of the Sun. Not necessarily a busted card, but once again, this is a card that worked with Luka, where you can get two tokens and then have it blinked out by Yorian as well later on, not only gain you a little bit of life, but also creating uh, that Luka target. And then we'll get to four fires of invention. That is what this deck is trying to do. It is, in my opinion, the best fires deck right now. I think Jeskai Fires is a thing of the past just because of what a bad matchup it has against these, oh, excuse me, against these Yorian decks that are trying to blink Elspeth Conquer's death and now blink Elspeth Conquer's death and repeatedly agent things. So think about as the Jeskai fire side, you just play fires into Sphinx of the Forgotten Truth um, or Sphinx of Foresight, excuse me. Your opponent just goes, okay, Luka, negative, put Agent into play, steal your fires, play Yorian, blink your Agent, steal your Sphinx. You can't do that anymore. You know, that is just not the world we live in anymore. Standard has moved so fast that I think Jeskai Fires. You heard it here. Cavalier of Flames, Jeskai Fires is now unplayable. This is the new Jeskai deck, so get used to it, folks. Now, let's talk about a little bit more of the four drops here. Four Shadow of the Skies, great card to deal with all these aggressive decks. Not a ton of them being played right now, but uh, Obosh decks are the signature aggressive decks, as well as Rakdos Sacrifice you want. And sometimes you just need to clean up the board, uh, even if we just have like a bunch of Shark Typhoons or something like that. Uh, three Mythos of Aluna, I thought was a really cool card here. You're able to copy any of the stuff you have, but most importantly, if your opponent is far ahead, you're able to copy their spells, like copy their Luka in a mirror match, uh, which we did do round number two, where we like Mythos, copied their Luka, got our own agent, stole their Luka, Luka again, got another agent, stole their agent, and you just get to pull so far ahead of them very quickly. You also do play green land so that you can use the fight ability on Mythos. Uh, it's never come up for me yet, but you know, we wanted to play some more Triomes anyways, just because they're great lands. One Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, which I'm still pretty un unsure about. It's been very medium to me, but it is another Planeswalker to be able to create tokens for Luka. It has this staying power where you can escape it uh, and play it from your graveyard later in the game if you're attritioned out. So I think it's okay, but that one I'm, I'm pretty lukewarm on. You know what I'm not lukewarm on though is Luka. Luka is something that me and Ross explored on Versus Live. Um, to some success, we kind of had a deck similar to this, or I should say Ross did, where he was looking to get rid of creatures and then just flash in and raise Forerunner. You know, I mean, that was doing a different thing, but basically, you know, kind of doing the same thing. He was pretty close on this. Then we got Elspeth Conqueror's Death in a full four of. It is punished by other Lurus decks, but we're not seeing a ton of those around. And they will always have one target for Elspeth Conqueror's Death. But realistically, that's the only matchups where it's not good. Everything else right now, it is just what you want to be doing. These Yorian arm races are basically everything that standard is right now. So just play four of it. Another thing you just play four of because it's such a good card is Shark Typhoon. Shark Typhoon is a card that 
immediately when it got spoiled, I wasn't necessarily in love with it, but I always had flashbacks of Decree of Justice. And now that card was a staple. Um, the front half of Shark Typhoon is not as good as the front half of Decree of Justice, making angels and whatnot, but it is still doing similar things. And uh, it's proven itself uh, in standards metagame right now by getting around Narset, getting around Teferi, and being able to pressure these Planeswalkers that are kind of tough for you to deal with. And then you have three Agent of Treachery. That is just the combo piece of the deck. So what you're trying to accomplish for this deck is just Luka, negative two, get rid of whatever creature, bring an Agent into play, steal something, and just try to do that every single turn. Um, so now I guess uh, one thing I forgot to touch on is the matchups. We should have 3 0 I am I am 7-0 personally off of camera just playing this deck because I love it. Yorian Fires decks have been my favorite deck in this format by far, and this is just the best one. So I think this is the best deck in standard. We crushed our first two Yorian Mirrors, and then Mono Red got so dang lucky game one to beat us. And then game three, we may have kept a little bit of a loose goose and maybe deserved to lose that one, but I'm still sticking by my keep. Maybe let me know what uh, you think about the keep in the comments and we'll uh, we'll see if I was crazy or uh, just got unlucky, which that's what I'm leaning on. All right, we're gonna get to uh, the sideboard here. We got two Aether Gusts. Definitely want these up against, you know, Mono Red, um, Jeskai Fires, if you still see it. Mono Green, I've seen being splashed around a little bit. Aether Gust is one card I'm not really high on. Um, I could see that being turned into something else because I don't want to bring it in in like mirror matches. I don't want to bring it in against Bant Yorian. You do want to bring it in against like Red Black Obosh, I guess, but maybe not even. I think I would rather have these as Decree of uh, Justice here. Uh, that is what that card is called, right? Yeah, yeah, Decree. Uh, the one colorless, one white decree, exile, red or black, permanent. I just think that's better right now. I'm just not an Aether Gust fan. Uh, with Jeskai Fires being out of the metagame, I think that was the main card I really wanted it against. Uh, so I, I, I think we can safely get rid of that. Fire Prophecy up against any aggressive decks. These odd converted mana cost Obosh decks, it's excellent against. We brought it in against Mono Red, super good there too. Any tiny creatures. And then Mystical Dispute and Dovin's Veto, we saw us bring those in uh, in other Yorian matchups. Well, we sided out three fires uh, and four shatter the skies. I'm standing by that sideboard plan. I really like it. Um, I think fires is a liability post board up against, especially in the mirror, because they can age it and take it. But it's also a liability because you don't get to cast your interactive spells too well. So I think I would get rid of that. Um, ooh, one card I could see replacing Aether Gust would be two Dream Trawler. Let's do that, actually. Two Dream Trawler, kind of do what Oliver 2 did up, up against the Jeskai Cycling decks of just uh, trade out Agent of Treacheries for Dream Trawlers and just always be able to look it into Dream Trawler. I think that seems way better, actually. And then two Solar Blares when you need Wrath of God number five and six. All right, everybody, I want to thank you so much for watching this week's Dropping Bombs. I think this is the best deck in Standard by a lot. So if you want to battle people and try to join this Yorian arms race, this is the deck to do it with those few amount of changes I suggested. And we'll see you uh, laddering up here in high mythic ranks on MTG Arena here uh, in the coming weeks. So good luck, and we'll see you next week for another episode of Dropping Bombs.